Hello, I'm Hayley Hassel and you're live with me for the next few minutes. Hayley Hassel investigates Britain's claims culture. Clearly people get ill when they're on holiday, but the amount of claims that are coming from this island means there's either been a food poisoning epidemic of massive proportions or something else is going on. Earlier this year, there were touts in Spain approaching holiday makers. You don't even need to speak to the solicitor or say anything, really. Guarantee you won't regret it. Well, we'll see. I've been staying at the hotel for two days now, and there are nearly 3,000 people staying here at the moment. Now, it's not unfathomable that some of them could get food poisoning, but 90% of the claims that were put in over the past two years were not reported to the hotel at the time. I'm on the road with Trading Standards Officer Carl Jones. We're on the way to a shop that could be selling counterfeit alcohol. This shop looks no different to many thousands of others. It's hard to believe that they could be selling anything more dodgy than an out-of-date pasty. I mean, it's the sort of shop that I'd stop on as I was driving yeah. past and get yeah. something, and I wouldn't think anything of it at all. Anything of it at all, but a lot of them are like that, to be honest with right. you. Right. Now we're heading upstairs. So Carl's not sure what he's going to find up here. So we're just coming slowly. So the other team are showing Carl what they found in the other premises. That was under the counter, right? That's odd. She's found what looks like genuine stock on the shelves, yeah. and then under the counter is old stock. Some of the old stock can be counterfeited. That it's rings just, alarm bells with you. It does, absolutely, yeah. All these girls have something called orthorexia. It's basically an obsession with eating too little and exercising far too much, sometimes constantly. But it can be more than that. It can be psychologically damaging and it can be often life-threatening. I had compulsive exercise, so I'd exercise. I, wouldn't, I would not sit down, I'd, I'd, keep, I'd keep exercising, keep going. It sort of begins by just sort of skipping a bit, little bits of maybe a few snacks or something. But then it just gets more and you start skipping more meals and you start not eating a lot less. I still get hungry sometimes because my mum can't afford to buy like proper food and like, sometimes you could wake up in the night because you're so hungry. If you be hungry once, there's no doubt that it would obviously happen again. Does that worry you? Does it worry you that you don't know when you're next going to eat? Or that you don't it know worries, yeah, because like, you don't know if you haven't eaten in a while. It feels like a pain shooting for your belly. So because they're hungry, they're actually turning to crime? Well, some of them do, but it's not, they're not uh, stealing sweets and chocolate and chewing gum. They're actually going out and stealing bread and food for themselves and the family. Now last year over 3,000 children arrived in the UK alone. I wanted to find out what it was like to make that journey and to start a new life in the UK. I've met with Ruth. She was 14 when she left her home of Eritrea in Africa and travelled many months to reach the UK. Now to protect her we've changed her name and her words are being spoken by someone else. My home in Eritrea is in a small village. We walked for three weeks to get from Ethiopia to Sudan, mostly through the desert. It was very hot. Most of the people with me died on that walk. The children in this film, they know only too well how hard life can be without money. Christmas time, I remember Dad only had a pot of beans and um, two slices of bread. All he had was one pot of beans and two slices of bread. It's now estimated that 2.6 million children live with someone who's a hazardous drinker and over 700,000 kids live with someone who's drink dependent. So actually it's not over for you? I don't think I'll ever be over. But honestly, I think this is going to affect the rest of my life for, well, forever. In 2007, I worked undercover in hospitals to investigate the state of maternity care in Britain. I found services stretched to the limit, with a shortage of midwives and equipment. Too much workload with high risk women. Too many patients, not enough support staff. Crying out there. I'm Sorry? Asleep. She's crying. Who's crying? The woman who's waiting for the bed. What's her? Get a 
early December, Haley Cutts and Arafa Farouk are preparing to go undercover. It was Haley who was first to get work. I've had some light training in that process. You'll get to watch a video and you should get, obviously should be training you up because we've got some of the cars in the car. Turn you up proper, so you're just gonna have to just watch and grasp it. I like having people at different times. Oh, it's awful sitting waiting, you know, half past 11 and nearly 12 o'clock sometimes.